Hello, welcome back. We're going to talk about Snowflake access control best practices in this video. A um, couple of days ago, uh, I was tasked to create two separate rows in our uh, Snowflake instance. One is the uh, reader row, and then the other is the writer row. So it ends up pretty complicated. Um, I didn't like the way I did it, so I went and looked for better ways how to implement these uh, roles. So this is the the roles I um, end up with, and um, here are some uh, reference materials for you to to read if you wanted to look at it. Um, basically, there's three main things uh, in here. Um, what you need to do is uh, create for each database, you're going to create a database owner row to have a full access to the database, all right? And the second thing, you're always gonna need to have the reader row too. So, and you create that reader row separately that basically has all the read permissions on all the database objects inside of this database, okay? And then also in the end, you wanted to make sure that you assign these basic, basic level roles into higher level roles. Basically the reader role will be assigned to uh, owner role. And then all these owner roles will be assigned to system admin roles. In that, in that case, system admin role will basically have uh, access to all these database databases, okay? So now I'm going to basically run through these scripts. Okay? There are three main pieces of scripts I'm going to run through and, and talk about each line by line, okay? So I have a Snowflake instances here. Let's go to the first section here. So first we're going to create a, two rows, the reader row and the monitor row. So the monitor will have monitor execution and monitor usage on this account. And then reader all, reader all row will be assigned to monitor all. Okay, let's run this. This all run fine, and then we're gonna create the uh, owner row for the database, and we're gonna assign the execute task to this owner row. Okay, you can refer to Trevor's code why he preferred this way. I think this is okay to be on uh, onto the system admin row too, um, but let's leave this as is, and then we grant this owner row to a system admin row. Basically, grind the lower level row to the higher level row to make sure the sys admin row have access to a lower level row. Okay, let's do run this. Okay, these are all completed. Now let's create database DB1. And then this is what very important to grind the ownership for database one to owner db one, owner db row. Okay, so now let's do that. Okay, so now let's create the reader row here. And then we're gonna grant the warehouse usage and monitor to this reader row. Okay. So Let's run this, and then we're gonna we're going to grant reader row to owner row. So basically, this reader row will be granted to owner row here. Okay, and then and then we're gonna uh, also grant the reader row to the reader all row, right? So you can see this compute warehouse is also granted to both of the owner and read all, right? So you can see this simplify the scripts. When you 
using hierarchy to assign lower level row to higher level row. Now, this is good, the complicated parts that you go for uh, rate only row that you need to assign all, all these objects permissions to the reader row. The uses on um, database, the future task, schemas, functions and procedures, tables, task views, stages, formats, and strings, right? So as you can see, these are all future functions, future, future objects. So it's very important that you actually create this database first and, and create this, this reader role first before you create any of these objects because once you create objects, you have to reassign this. Without this, this future objects uh, uses assignment, assignment, you are going to have to redo this every time, right? Okay, so let, now let's execute this. All right. Now the next step is to create the temporary database, which is for temporary tables. So this is the limitation with uh, Snowflake 2 for temporary databases, temporary tables that uh, you need to have a create table row, create table permission on that schema in order to create temporary table. So this last one, we're gonna use the owner row to create that schema, temp schema and create a grant the create permission permission to the reader role here. Now it's very important you um, use the owner role to create this schema in objects, right? So it's very important that you actually use this uh, owner owner role to do it. So only owner owner role should and can create objects in the database, in these databases. To simplify access control, because, for example, since admin role could, you could use this one to create objects in the database, but then this owner DB1 does not actually own it, so you may not even be able to see it or drop it. So that causes many problems. Because of that, you um, use the owner role create these objects over here. Okay, so that's what this is, right? I think we've done this already. Okay, now these are the cleanup scripts. I will post this in GitHub and thanks to um, Travis Code and uh, provided this example. I'm just uh, summarizing it over here in the video for you. And uh, I will also post this. Um, draw the L diagram to you so you can use it uh, for your own need if you need to uh, use this for your architecture or Snowflake uh, documentation. All right, thank you very much.